Hello everybody, welcome, welcome to the live FB. That's right, at, uh, tonight at the 24th of March. Tonight we'll be talking about how to spot market bubble in the KLS and how to avoid it. Of course, you may want to see right now whether do we see market bubble or not. And very quickly, we have Eileen in here, whether about the glove sentiment. We will touch on that one when we get down to the glove rubber sector. That's right, in here. But what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Do you think our market right now is at the bubble or it is merely another situation or another condition that we see in the market? What do you do? Just type it in there and let me know what you think so I would know how to address them at least to know the situation where you are in here but definitely tonight I want to make very good sense of what we see in the, in, in the market and after tonight you will have pretty much a good situation or at least know where you are heading and because more importantly I want you all to have a good sound and a good basis in fundamental of the company in here. Uh, that's another one, a personal opinion on MAAG. I will uh, maybe address that towards the end here. All right. Now, for those of you who are first time, do join our Telegram chat room for free stock in information in here. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube, right? And so all video, including tonight, will be updated and you will definitely get the latest copy uh, in your YouTube and you can able to follow it also and don't forget to download a smart uh, copy of smart roby and definitely this month our promotion is still on and you get double credit 400 credit when you share with your friends they get a copy of your referral code and download and you will get this in here so make good use of this in here right now also don't forget uh the smart roby breakfast show for all the trade ideas that has done pretty decent, I would have said, and you can see some of the intermediate trade ideas that is available on Smart Roby. We present that every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10.15 on the uh, fb.com slash smart Roby. So we have picked some good winners, 61, UWC, KGB, uh, Great Tech, and Franken, and Inari. These are the sort of so-called great stocks that you can do for all, all right. And meanwhile, that's right. Meanwhile, we have one of the best sector that is doing well and it has caught many people eye is our one year trend of technology sector now for those of you who have some technology can you key in what kind of stock you have bought usually in a tech stock whether it is inari whether it was penta great tech uwc jf tech uh and all the tech 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 <laughs> can you type in there at least i will know some of you have those stocks in here now do take note whatever stocks that you make it must bring you the kind of return that you see over in here all right very important now if you have bought a lot of stocks and it didn't give you positive return remember we always talk about the required rate of return in here right and uh, yes some of you are already putting in there great great so meanwhile this this has been ongoing the one year trend of the technology stocks in here and uh, since uh, april i think has gone firm up we will touch on each individual stock thank you for king i can see many of you have the uh, vs tag and uh, notion v tag okay but take note of the response now remember not all tech stocks are some of you mentioned like notion vtech belongs to the industrial products that's right technology it didn't go so much so meanwhile they were rising busa uh, tech in here then when everyone thought it was safe to buy some more tech stock and then suddenly the market dropped another 16 percent that's right and uh, you know the market uh, also follow in tandem with bc in the us in here and then the expert that's right the expert uh, i'm not an expert i'm just more of a market follower and i observe a lot of things and i want to share my observation in the market so you will learn too so they are saying look the long-term perspective of all the stocks especially in the tech is still good because of the post-covid recovery we have seen some uh, variable which we have talked about it earlier the interest rate which we'll touch again tonight um uh, in here so definitely only buy stock with good earning prospect which continue to be the theme that you have so i i've, I've seen some of the stocks that you have like penta inari franken those are very good and decent stock i i think i have them to continue to hold them 
if they continue to give them good earnings prospect all right now very important is this chart that we have and all our subscriber for our trade vsa if you don't have it you might want to consider getting our plug-in and you're able to access our trade vsa uh this statistic and what it simply show you let me just bring up the uh, laser pointer here as at the time when this market where we see this green light here, this green bar, that means foreign funds are buying and you can see that why the market goes up. But the last one and a half week, we have seen a possibility selling by foreign funds towards the mid-March. Is it due to the geopolitical risk that we've seen? Because uh, every day we are getting more news about parliament being delayed, could not convene. Could that be one of the reasons that the foreign funds are, uh, are selling and that we see this market actually, you know, we're holding trying to break 1620 but could not and finally you know came back down to 16 or so what do you think all right just let me know what you think this market in here could not hold that level that we seen and it finally decided to you know pop back down again all right we see this time and time again in here so foreign funds is important so going forward one of the leading indicator that is in our trade vsa plug-in package make sure you should subscribe to it is to look at the busa foreign fund flow every day right and you can see if you are getting a lot of this green thing that ensures that this market was going to go up higher in here and also someone i may always say the north korea that's why we've broken the relationship with north korea maybe that's why foreign fund wanted to go out. i like that too all right so this is uh where you've seen the 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 from the green bar that you see now we're turning red bar and you can see even previously we have a lot of red bars mean foreign fund outflows that the market continue to drop so we should have this you know uh stabilize we need to have more foreign funds uh coming in there then we can go up in here all right so let's move on to our current market now yesterday the market went down almost down 21 points we we were very at this this morning in here in the breakfast show i was also talking about we were in the very a tiny age of breaking lower that's right breaking and to have the red pentagon coming out in here but it didn't all right so and um, this evening at five o'clock the klci market able to sustain above the 1602 which is still up seven point hanging out a trade. i also received a letter from one of our members saying that it's kind of confused when we see you know the trend zone are you know are still up you can see it's a blue trend zone here but yet many of the stocks are heading down like just like an example by one of you just mentioned mmag which was you know went up a fair bit and then climatic sell-off it is the case now some of these counter generally are when you come to there is lack of liquidity and smart money definitely play a role in there generally stick to uh for especially those of you who are beginner stick to the more market leader of each sector like many of you have key in there like dno penta franken myeg you know those, those are those are great in here right and do have a plan and i'm going to share with you my five ways huh, how to avoid this definitely ensure so right now we can see market trending uh, downtrend soon but we still need to wait for the red pentagon in here all right so uh tonight will be updated in here the bull <laughs> like it or not may not be back in the bull may not be back in but it'll be interesting to see what the bull wanted to do right now uh do you think that we're going to have a very rosy outtrend definitely as i said before going forward for the KLCY market, it's going to be a real challenge because of the geopolitical situation that we see. Uh, election may come or election election come also not so good. Then you see a lot of market volatility. Election don't come. This continue of sideways moving. But I will also show you a chart later in uh, towards the middle part about the correlation of ours versus the US. All right. Now also take a look at it, the current sector which is hot hot now again. This is part and parcel of the feature in here. You could see when you compare the uh, the dark green one, that is the current week. The week before is the light green. So you can see uh, definitely uh, industrial product last week was just made and it's turning 
positive. That's why I think industrial product, we have seen ATA, INS, we have seen VS also moving up. The energy sector has tapered off, you can see in here, but the construction and property uh, started to move up. And that's why this morning on the breakfast show, two trade ideas we were talking about was MC Men and also uh, Faja, all right, that is the construction sector. Of course, on the right hand side in here, you can see here, we still have technology recovering, recovering, you know, it was much worse of healthcare also recovering, but the utility is turning much worse off. We have media turning much worse off and also plantation also recovering and we have uh, logistic finance also turning bad. So this is actually a very good indicator daily. You can see how the sector move by itself. That's right. So of course we do have the sector analysis. Make sure you get a copy of our sector analysis through our plugin in here. Something you want to subscribe and you will get a lot of this great idea with the uh, trend zone and all the color indicator to pick the right stone yourself. All right. Now, of course, let's turn our attention to the US market. And right here, you can see this US market, what we have seen so far, uh, we are seeing a red pentagon right now. Now, red pentagon in here, that indicates uh, we will see probably a sideway market. And last night, we have seen the Dow actually sell off almost 300 points. Tonight, uh, market should be open. I haven't checked it in yet. And uh, 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 the early futures seems to indicating a point to the upside in here. Let's see how tonight it's going to be. One of these days, I will do a US market trading. Probably uh, just two weeks before, there were some requests from you to have a preview to our masterclass and we will continue with our uh, uh, live trading US to, to show you how we trade the US market in here. But right now we are showing the red pentagon zoo take note on this side here, you can see here, but also on the uh, Biden administration, right? What has uh, uh, concurred from the Biden administration is the US 1.9 trillion for the COVID-19 stimulus, which has been passed and right now, Having said that, item number two, they are talking, not even finish at 1.9, now you got another 3 trillion for the green energy plan or the infrastructure. So all in all, it's already 5 trillion, just less than 100 day. Our friend, uh, President Biden, is spending that. So what does that tell you? That tell you this fella is going to put a lot of you know, firepower into the stock market. And in many ways, the market is pausing and I'm going to talk about this later. What do you think? Do you think another 3 tree and is going to push up the market or, or you're going to be scratching your head? Oh goodness, this is going to not end up well and people are retreating. And in many ways it's going to, but I want to leave that judgment to you by the time you finish this talk tonight in here. All right. So definitely Biden's are preparing 3 trillion, just I've just said yet, in a new economic uh, spending in there. But at the same time, uh, the US has already 23.5 trillion. I think I've talked about this. This is ongoing for the higher interest rate that we've seen. Huh? Uh, how are they going to pay that? Right, and uh, one of the uh, reasons that sec uh, tech sector is heading some headwinds is because of the interest rate movement, which I'll show you later on. So, for a 23 trillion at a 1.6 percent interest rate on three months, that would simply tell you they are going to be paying around 28 to 30 billion a month. So, US cannot afford to pay so much uh, interest on that. And not forgetting our Malaysian side, we are close to also 1 trillion, okay? But US, lagi, lagi powerful, 23.5. So how can they afford such a big stimulus? So how did they doing it? That's why we need to study the market it is. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the history of bubble. When we talk about bubble, it's definitely market bubble. We know we started back in 1600. The first one was the tulip bubble, then the exchange early South Sea bubble. That's the one that explained that uh, the financing of the uh, so-called expedition to the East, where they did this and they were able to get gold, merging markets, 1820 railway, and all the way uh, to 2020, which is the SPAC, stand for Special Purpose uh, Acquisition Vehicle, and also Bitcoin. And in many ways, people talk about Bitcoin being a bubble too. Now, if you put our attention to a little bit of history, try to understand it in here. We start off with the Tulip Bubble, and that was a 1600. 
And what happened that market between November 2nd, right, to November February 3rd? Okay, now you all don't know a tulip is a flower, okay? They're very beautiful flower. I usually can get them off from Bangsa. There's a little nice uh, a warehouse factory that sells very beautiful tulips. Quite reasonable. If you like the tulip, it comes in many, many colors. My, my last trip uh, went to Kirkenoff in Holland. That was beautiful. You see 6 million tulips. Maybe I'm just one of those guys who like tulip flower in here. But this tulip at that time around the 1636, one tulip that you see here, this little bulb here, can buy one house in Holland. That's right, at the point where the market hit 200, uh, uh, 200 uh, this will be in Holland, Holland dollars. Uh, and it went from 25. That was almost 700% return from November to February 3rd. Nowadays, 700% uh, return, not big deal, isn't it? You saw MMAG, right? Short up, we've we, we seen others like, ah, data prep or so, right? <laughs> data prep so short up and then she come back down, isn't it? So all things go straight up or will come back down. And that is very scary. How about the, the big brand names like we've seen? Tesla, okay? From Tesla itself in September, it was only uh, 50 US dollar. No, September 2020. To of course to right now, uh, September 2020. Uh, this was only last year to this year. This thing uh, went from fifty dollars to nine hundred dollars, and that is a staggering, almost a one thousand nine hundred percent return. So when you compare tulips with what we see in Tesla, you know what's the big deal? No big deal, isn't it? Right? And we have seen it also in many of our local stock. So this question continued to come up: Are we heading the bubble? What do you think? When you look at what we've seen in 1636 and also right now 2021, is it a bubble? Share your thoughts on here. Type it in there. What do you think? Is it bubble or not? Just type it in there. All right. I'd like to know what do you think in here. But having said that, uh, we, we have to take a, into the reason. Just like you know, uh, Tesla jumped 6% because of Kerry Wood, which is one of the uh, fund managers for the Art Wood, a big supporter of Tesla in here, says that this stock will hit 3000 And he came up with a very good point because of the possible robo-taxi. That's right, robo-taxi service. Google that, you will find that that is a very interesting. Right now, Tesla is only 668 So by the time you will scratch both sides of your head, wow! If Tesla is $668 in US, maybe I should get some Tesla because it's going to go down to $3,000. Is it that simple or not? What do you think? All right. And I also can share with you how you can open up a free US account with very low brokerage. So stay, make sure you stay with me towards to the end of the, uh, the talk in here. Of course, any bubble always revolt around speculation, right? We have precious metal, we have silver, we have debt, selected companies, uh, foreign direct investment, IPO, right? New technology, right? Definitely, if you look at the current uh, uh, scene that we've seen, is the robo-taxi that Tesla has in that's possible 3,000. So you think of it, if I have Tesla, I bought it maybe 600 right now, it's about 668. Hit $3,000, I will still hold it, isn't it? Right? Will he hold it or not? Now, why Cathy Wood was so confident? Because at that time, she said that Tesla was only 80 US dollar. It would hit 800. It did hit 800. It went down to 900, then came back down. So now she's saying it go down to 3,000. Who is right and who is wrong? We all really don't know. Will Cathy Wood be right? Will Tesla be robo-taxi? The future is unpainted yet. Nobody knows about it. So all we can do as investors is look at all the clues, which I will present to you tonight, and you have to make some sort of conclusion. Definitely using volume spread analysis does give us an edge over there. All right. Now also, at the same time in here, we have the uh, guru. Uh, market bubble crash guru and his name was Harry Dan. He's been around, he's from Harvard, a professor in Harvard and he's very famous and every day he also predict market crash, market crash. He said that two years ago, market crash. Four years ago, market crash. And right now, <laughs> in March, just about uh, uh, two weeks ago, he said market crash is coming. If it's not by June, it's within two to three years. So there will always be people like that, depending who you listen to. So sometimes when you see those mail, and one of the reasons why we want to do it in Trade VSA is to uh, teach you how to anticipate this kind of news that you will get it in your WhatsApp, in your Facebook, people telling crash, 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 up, up, up. You will be bengang, you'll be confused. So always look at the chart and 
right now i hope the little small service that we do in here will put you in the right way so you will know how to differentiate between market crash and up market in here all right so of course why is this the case if you look back to when uh, Joe, uh, Barack Obama was appointed way back in uh, 2008, we have the global financial crisis. This is the gray one that you see here. The global financial crisis in here, uh, the market went down to, this is the S&P, went down to uh, less than 1,000 in here. Of course, from the base level, from the big uh, global financial crisis, the market has gone up 300% straight up. And it is happening right now. We did have a market crash, isn't it? Last year, March due to the COVID and the market gain straight up. So this is a big concern in here. After the market crash, the market went straight up. Why? Because there, were there a change in the fundamental? Were there a change in the financial system in here? Let's examine the facts. So if you look at 2008, uh, continue for where we left. We have this 2020 just on top of me here. Let me just build this part. This was a 2008. This correspond to where we are here. Okay, so this is, this is the part we continue. So the market continue to go straight up. So which tells you since 2009, this market has been going up like rocket. <laughs> That's right, like rocket ship in here, right? And I think how many of you benefited since 2009 being bullish in the market? Right. If you do, just type benefit. All right. I think I have benefited many of my clients and many of my students who have been with me all these years. I think you have benefited. But having said that, uh, what has transpired, you can see here, was the big, big crash that we saw after the COVID-19. So that market has fell almost 46% and immediately it took off and still up from the base, uh, another 52% where it is so that's why people now are very very confused you know is this a market bubble will the crash comes in here or not so definitely there are many questions having said that so again going back to the model of what we call bubble in here now there is always if you look at it this could be translated to the four stages uh, four stages of the market uh, uh, climate uh, what we call accumulation stage uh, accumulation stage one stage two okay so this is accumulation stage one stage two will be here all right which is the the uh the markup then stage three is the di distribution in here and then we have the stage four all right the stage four will be the uh what we call the distribution in here so where do you think we are <laughs> can someone tell me are we in the greed are we in the delusion are we in a new paradigm or are we enthusiasm uh, where their media start to take off okay what do you think inside there all right are we in the mania uh, phase yet are we in the blow off phase yet okay so this again tends to be very very i always try to use sentiment analysis in a sense i i, I gauge the group of people that i normally talk to how sentiment they are and i have to say right now we are not much i i don't think we are at this level yet we are probably at the media attention this much in here, here right i'm going to explain and i want you to be a judge of it too after i explain that so this basically tell me maybe we are in the beginning of a mania phase um of course some of you may disagree with me you have the right to disagree with me but at the end of the day more importantly is that if you disagree with me or if you agree with me did you make money or not as i said before elon musk has a great code you can always be part of it or you can just watch it by the side, all right? And many times we always say before, it's always good to put a little bit of money, you don't have to put a lot on what you say is true, and there's always a lesson learned. When you have money in the game, a little bit of money, could be a few thousand dollars in here, then you will probably learn much faster in here, all right? So again, let's look at also what we have seen so far as the market continue to go up. This is the US Treasury in here, and if you look at the uh, dark, the black line in here is the corporate debt over the GDP. So what is simply say, despite all the crash that we have, we have the 74 crash, we have the Latin debt crisis, 87 crash, Asian global financial crash, we have uh, the uh, long-term capital management bond, we have the financial crisis crash. So what has happened, many of this, you can simply conclude that the crash can be overcome by having more debt. That's right, you're having more debt. So, of course, looking at it from a traditional standpoint, if you are someone who have a lot of debt, one day you will go bankrupt. And that is the reason why it is. So, like it or not, central banks as well as president, 
do not like a market crash on their uh, presidential administration. So they rather push it down the road. I think at one point in time, we will have a major crash, like it or not, where the, the value of the, the money. And it is very similar when a meteorite hit the earth. If a meteorite hit earth, nothing will survive. We all will go back to Stonehenge. Okay? But to me, the odds of having that it's very, very small. That is very, very small. So meanwhile, it, it is, we continue to move up higher as the corporate debt. So there's, there is a real trend inside here. You can see the corporate debt continue to go higher. The market continue to go higher. We just want to follow the smart money. And this is all is all about following the smart money in here. Right. So let's talk about the market bubble. And there are always two sides of the story. Okay. Two sides of the story mean you're either for or you are against. All right. Let's listen to two sides of the story for a start. Now, of course, people will always say this is way back in 2020 that with bubble, everything continued to inflate. You can see gold, silver, all assets are heading higher. Everything is just rallying up there. Okay. Then there is how the bubble will end. When bubble end, like we've seen in the tulip bubble, everybody died. Everybody lost money. So some people prefer to keep cash. Even cash can devalue. How do we see that? Now recently, you all know the ringgit has depreciated against the US dollar. Many people talk about the US dollar uh, is uh, weakening against Malaysia because all prices is going higher, but actually it's all very, very not true. The reason why ringgit is are going higher or going lower is because it is based on Chinese Yuan. If you have a chance to go to TradingView, make sure you compare Chinese Yuan next to our Ringgit. Despite what the economists say, just look at the Chinese Yuan. And many of them, because Chinese Yuan is one of our largest uh, trade partner for that one, so when the Chinese devalue against the US dollar, our ringgit will develop. They can say a lot of things <laughs> that you may not like to hear, like you know, a geopolitical situation. That's what our ringgit depreciate, or we we have uh, uh, no FDI coming in, or we have FDI coming in. But pay attention to the Chinese yuan. All right. So in here, then the bubble about to pop in 2017. Then we go back to 2016. Everything every year, someone just like Harry then will have something very drastic to say because these are what we call the doomsday dr doomsday every year they'll say well 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 it reminds me of one of the uh very good analysts i used to know he will you know sometimes he will call me and view and tell me that the market's going to crash going to crash maybe at one point they will be true but going forward i don't see that right all right calling the market crash and even way back in 2014 janet yellen was at, at that time the uh, fed chairperson but now she's a uh, secretary of uh, secretary treasury secretary now under biden administration they call that do and she is now into money printing that's right that's how we get the 1.9 trillion COVID as well as the next three trillion which is coming to in here all right so let's look at the other side of the story that the market isn't bubble yet and here we go and this is investing legend byron way said the s p will hit 4,500 right now it's about 3,007 in uh, 2021 but this was only in january okay uh just check out the nasdaq how much nasdaq has gone up but they warned of a 20 percent correction in here in the first half of the year then there's a lot of this so-called bubble chatter which is misleading high valuation does not mean a uh, eminent of a collapse which is quite true and the market uh, the money gusher says that there is no stock bubble yet high valuation yes market bubble no and i tend to agree with them in here what i've seen so far and one of the reason why if you look at this this is the top us francs versus the top holding in s p 500 now if you see in this turquoise color here this is the fang stand for facebook Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. And because they're one of the stocks that had did very, very well with the technology, they happen to constitute a bigger uh, uh, component of S&P 500. And you can see in here from 00 to January 2020, and that's what when the stocks really pick up in here, they almost represented 21% of S&P 500, which traditionally, if you look at it, it's only 12.5. Whereas the top holding are the other stocks like Chevron, uh, Intel, 
uh, uh, the bank side like Goldman Sachs. So they are smaller position. So what we are trying to say in here, overall the market, we have seen only rarely on the tech side. But the rest of the market, which is the other value sectors, are coming right now because of the COVID-19, right? We have seen COVID-19, a lot of people have been buying a lot of iPads, a lot of mobile phones, a lot of Zoom communication, and that has pushed a lot of the US fangs here has gone up much higher. But right now, we are seeing the rest of the sector, which is the uh, retail, the holiday, the travel, the, the cyclic one, which is the oil and gas. They are coming back because of economic recovery that we see. So that's what exact, uh, I'm trying to explain in here. Because they are coming back slowly. So one sector, the tech stock is perceived to be very, very bullish because of that. All right. So here is the guideline from a technical side, how to see market top. If you're going to buy high, you need to be very, very cautious, right? Because after the market has surged, just like M uh, M M M M A G, some of you, after you search high, you're decided to go in. You have to be very careful. You need to pay attention to price and volume, right? And if the trade ha don't have the kind of setup, you might want to bought it. So it's very important to know the setup of the trade. And this is something that we teach in our master class in here. So also look at the KLCI market index like Maybank to determine the sector, uh, the KLCI, whether this will be the top or not. This is definitely one way to identify market top, the bubble in here. All right, and also here is a very good chart, uh, correl correlation to the US market to the KLCI. Why do we do that? It's important we do this because we want to ensure that if US market go up, we are going up. If your market is coming down, we are coming down. So you can see from here onwards, when we have this COVID-19 plunge, our market did follow too. But the plunge here was steeper. We already started somewhere in February because it impacted us. And only US uh, came into here. But guess what? Who came out of the recover recovery faster? The US. And Malaysia only comes to around uh, November, right? We sort of tapered off, right? And right now in January, we have this... Uh, January onwards on uh, the market seems to be taping off and hasn't gone mad but whereas you can see here since November November 2020 US market has taken off one significant is the rollout of the vaccine take note of it the rollout of vaccine was coming in in November uh, in uh, US market so we can see that market now now you all know the COVID-19 vaccine rollout in Malaysia it's been very very slow isn't it right and uh, right now I just checked the paper it's only 448,000 that is almost after Rapa Bulan three weeks in you know US are doing almost 3 million per day we are doing 400,000 in three weeks and even one of the opposition parties said at this rate we will take a 6.4 million to vaccine or so this is a real problem to get this market moving up higher fast we need to get the COVID-19 in there so those of you who are the authority in here uh, you might do it. Do you all agree or not what I've just said? If you agree, give me a thumbs up right in here. What we have said, the vaccine rollout is very important to get this correlation of the KLCI to move in tandem with SMP in here. All right. So right now, it has tapered off because of the COVID. Now, also another guide to look at it is to determine climatic volume. If you look back the uh, 2013 to 2020, the, usually the high when we talk about market bubble is that we see climatic volume. And then there was another one in 2018 that is where before the election and after the election, kaput, <laughs> GE14 onwards on here. So let me show you what I mean here. So in 2013, right, we have this market here uh, that we have the climatic volume. So always, this is a monthly chart of the KLCI. And right now, you will, you will also see, hey, what's going on, Martin, here? Since 2020 and 2021, why do we have so much volume? Of course, you all know, isn't it? During COVID-19, what do people do? If people stay at home, all start to trade, isn't it? That's why we have the rubber gloves shooting up much higher. So if you look here, the volume for the last one and a half years, has been tremendously a lot penny stocks all those right and that has some way distorted the price anymore but yet we are still able to pick it you can see the volume up here 
was the highest uh, somewhere in uh, last year September that's what the market coming back in here so right now we don't have climatic volume we have this climatic volume another pull back here so the, as long as the volume start to taper off which is fine remember we need to go up on steady volume like we did here see when we see this steady volume go up we are going up next steady so right now if you look at the KLCI market as much as it is we are hitting a slight resistance in here due to the uh, moving sideways uh, two things the geopolitical situation the Chinese Yuan and the COVID vaccine rollout the sooner we roll out the faster we will be correlated back to the US market but right now we are out of sync in here we are not in this chart onwards we are not at the market bubble yet take note. we also look at the respective sector in here do take note so we want to see increased volume at the top as i said before in here and usually at market top you have few buyers buying right now right in here the common logic is that most buyer are uh, there are few buyer but more sellers remaining in here now one of the uh, the turning point you could see in covid 19 when the news break out that they have it when donald trump in march 2020 uh, he says that look this is not a problem uh we can handle it well then you could see the market sell off but that is after a very good economic report uh that they, they were coming in from 2019 going to 2020 so after the covid the market seems to collect and that was the inflection point in here so right now we if for the KLCI market i don't see an inflection point if you go back to the chart that we have in here the volume that we see so far for this month has been sort of taper off right we did have the high volume in uh, january and that's why we see this market coming back down usually when the market try to go up on high volume it is dangerous because smart money are distributing they are not selling. if you agree with what i've just said just type in uh two all right what i've just said here so those are some of the guidelines i want to share with you in here all right now if you look at the respective sector of the klci market in here tech stock has done very well they are number one the second one industrial sector we will look at each individual job, uh, charts here energy sectors these are few of the selected one and the not so good one here uh, let me just bring this chart for you since you are a bit blocking here okay and it's healthcare is the one that is down 30 percent so someone did ask me about healthcare just now whether healthcare is undervalued definitely yes 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 the question is definitely healthcare and you can see it, it is really uh, if you look at it very funny right you got the tech stocks uh from the sector it's up 60 percent but right now you're having a 15 percent drawn down in just what and then you have the health sector and this is because due to the rollout of the vaccine many of you already know the rollout of vaccine and that has dampened a lot of the sentiment people don't want to touch the rubber glove stocks because of that right whereas tech industrial sector continue to do well and plantation despite going up about four thousand uh, CPO prices it hasn't done very very well but in here all right let's look at the chart that I want to share with you in here all right so if you look at the S&P 500 number one okay is still the KLCI tech stocks all right now this is the S&P 500 let me just make a, a amendment here so what we had at that time was the KLCI tech stock was number one <laughs> yes number one you could see in comparison to S&P in final we went up 38 percent they are number one so our KLCI tech stock really rarely just like the American uh, brothers they are like cousins they follow it and uh, I think it's no surprise many of you have those like you just key in DNO Inari Penta Great Tech UWC the list just goes on whereas KLCI the remaining sector including the rubber glove and the finance didn't do so well so all in all only one person did very well it could not pull the entire market up and that is what you have today all right so you all understand this right so it's not uh, for those of you who may have known this is the one of the main reason here is because of the tech stock only one guy is pulling the rest same as what we see in us remember the us fang it is one of the biggest performer it pulls everybody up and right now everybody need to catch up now point number two the klci need to catch up because of the vaccine rollout is so slow that's what you're seeing it's lagging so something need to be done 
and also the COVID cases in Malaysia continue to flat out at 1,000. We have not gone below 1,000. It is important that we go below 1,000 cases per day and then go below two digit, below the 90, 80. Because we don't want something like Philippines happen. Do you know that Philippines hit the third wave and it's gone past six or seven thousand in here and if you notice the philippine stock has changed has taken another beating way way down they're down almost 20 percent from it at one point they were recovering so not many people talk about this point about the covid vaccine rollout and the number of cases if the cases continue to go up the government need to come in and pump money which is what's happening in the u.s when they pump the covid 19 vaccine the stock market goes up in here but right now it is not okay so understand that factor, then you know. So take note of the vaccine rollout that we have. Okay, so if you look at the tech sector in here, it's gone up by 60%. The volume is pretty high, no doubt about it. That's why we see the 15% uh, uh, correction that we see on the top, right? And then we look at the industrial sector, continue to go higher. Volumes hasn't been very high. They're going up in a steady volume, so that's very, very good. Uh, we also have the energy sector. Now, energy sector is actually taking a cue from the WDI US crude oil. So you, right now, you can see the volume taper off. So you will see uh, uh, prop possible of uh, energy uh, moving sideways. And also, there was an announcement today about uh, higher, uh, uh, higher uh, petrol prices too. So that also concurred with the uh, petrol that is heading higher. All right, and also finance, uh, which is the barometer of the market in here. They hasn't done much, to be frank with you. It is more on the recovery. And you will notice also in November, when you see this November, when the market picks up, same time like what the US S&P final is because of the vaccine rollout. Uh, they're getting the faster they get the vaccine rollout, you can see this market going up. So that's, that is a cue for this market to go higher in here, right? And also property sectors, you can see it's coming back. Also November, also you got right, and uh, uh, more the, the 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 property valuations are coming back uh, as there are more people uh, opening up and do more sales inside here. Uh, construction sector very similar. Uh, we we have this uh, resumption of many of the mega projects in here because they need to spur the government going, spur the government projects in here, and also plantation. And plantation has been one of the big disappointment here, just up five percent here, despite. Uh, crude oil prices has moved up way, way a lot there is. And, and I think many of you would know this is because there is not enough employee. Ah, that's right, not enough workers to do the harvesting. So many of the plantations uh, uh, harvesting has been left to rot there, all right, in there. But the biggest lagger is definitely healthcare with a minus 30%. So right now we can see on the right-hand side, you are seeing first time uh, after one, two, three, four time uh, the pentagon guider is coming up will this be the the we are even lower than it is it's one of the really lagger in here and uh, to me it's really undervalued because the next one or two years is going to be good so once the vaccine rollout you can see there's two differentiation here the vaccine rollout has been very slow so once the vaccine rollout quickly come in and the sooner this vaccine uh, been sort of absorbed into our news, you will see many of this rubber sector is going to move back up. You, you can see a, 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 what we call a differentiation, right? What do we see here? The rest of the sector was slow because vaccine. It's all about the vaccine, how soon they're going to roll out in here and also the, the, the cases. Right now, the sooner vaccine come in, when all this news been absorbed, healthcare certainly is going to move back to the 3,600 level in here. So let's talk about some guideline and some summary in here very important to differentiate between the market correction and market crashes in here all right now market correction is what we've seen so far a fall of 10 percent and that's that's what we have 10 15 percent that's what we've seen on the technology stock it's not a crash yet the crash is when it happened 10 percent per day all right okay this is 10 percent a day and this is one we one of the things that we call which is uh fair pricing what we call a self-correcting mechanism is like the irrational experiment when market go up too much a media will write about it and the market will correct itself and that's what it's currently doing right and there is a lot of chatter about market bubble market bubble market bubble but based on the facts that i've shown with you all it doesn't look like it yes valuation is high because us continue to print more money and maybe up to next year at this time you're going to have five trillion that's right another five trillion being added it to the 28 million so you're going to hit 33 trillion in here and point number three market correction does happen three to five times 
a, a, a year. Now, a bear market, certainly we have came off from last year in here, will see a 20% drop from the recent high. So these are facts that you should know. Take a picture of this one here, keep in mind. Market crashes happen every 7 to 10 years. And we just came out from it. Okay, so you got those facts inside here. And that will put you in a very good uh, spot in here. Market crash in the bubble. So also, I'm going to talk about interest rate now. The interest rate has been surging and surging. And uh, two, uh, three, uh, sorry, last week, the US Fed Chairman Fed, uh, Jerome Bauer did came in and said, look, uh, they will support the low interest regime until 2023. As I said before, the number of debts that they have is 23 trillion. Definitely, they're going to pay a lot of interest rate. So they cannot afford to have high interest rate. They will subsequently come in to buy the bond asset. So when the bond asset, when they buy the bond asset price go up and interest rate will come down. And we are seeing a bit in here. But the question remain is will tech stock move up to recover after we've seen the 10% drop like we show in here. Now this is the 10% drop that we've seen on the US Nasdaq on the 10 year yield. You can see we hit 13,000. It went out 12,000 now it's around back to 13,000 in here. So halfway through uh, what we have inside here. And if you look at the 10 year yield and this is in comparison to Apple. Okay. So the problem was when the interested yield move very fast. And that was the big problem. Interest rates are expect to move up slowly in respect to the market. Now, because of the inflation are measured year to year. Now, last year, inflation was at the lowest in March. Right now, it's March, isn't it? So you measure this year, 2021, to last year, 20 in March. So that is why you see a big difference. So going forward in April and May, that inflation will taper off and this 10-year yield should come down and your stock will require it. So let me give you a clue here. It does look like we are at the close, very close to the bottom of the tech stock. This is where you want to do something about your tech stock portfolio. You want to add on, you want to clean up whatever the case is. This is definitely a good time. The macroeconomics do support what we've seen so far in here. And definitely opening a US account or learning about US market will put you in the right way. We see the uh, when you compare the Apple to the 10 year new interest rate in here. Do I say this makes sense? Do I say this makes sense? Give me a thumbs up. All right. Okay. Now, so let's go down, go down to the five way to survive a stock market bubble crash. If there is one, personally, I don't think there is one. But if you do, number one, you want to have a plan for market crash. So I've given you some clue inside there. Definitely, I will share more in our master class. That's right. Number two, follow the smart money trail. Learn to read the chart. Learn to know the market stages. I've just shared with you very quickly on the volume anticipation at the top and the bottom, right? And also switch to safer stocks, right? All right. But I also given you a clue just now. The technology, right, seems to be doing well. Do you want to switch over or do you want to do a dividend yield if there is a market crash? Number four. Have a weekly watch list based on Pentagon Guider or using our very high win rate, 80% over call, no supply screener. And number five, always trade with the market and not against the market. Now, if you want to trade to the downside, should there be a market crash, learn to short in the future. And that's all again what we want to teach you also in our master class. Now, in our master class for the April intake, there will be four of us plus myself, uh, my two, uh, my two uh, trainer and coach. And many ways, our focus is really on doing it. So you can see right today, many of just are hearing Sini Maso, Sini Kulua. It's all about hearing and seeing. But let me convince you, when you start doing the real experience, that's where you will learn the fastest. That's right. So that's something that uh, we are very proud of. And our Masterclass April intake is open for registration. That's right. I, I really uh, encourage you to uh, take a look at it. And like what Elon Musk and Henry Ford will say, anyone who stopped learning is old, whether you're 20 or 80. And when you learn, you'll keep young. Look at me, still learning every day from all the questions that you have. At least I'm able to bring to you the condition 
of the market bubble that we're seeing in US and also locally to bring it to you so you have a better understanding of it. Of course, one of the better way is actually trade in the US market, like what Tom said, right, in the three-day masterclass. So the April 9, 10, 11, and 12. So make sure you key that into your calendar and remember that and that will be a date where we will teach you about the volume spread analysis and many, many more, many, many benefits. We repeat uh, unlimited attendings. We usually do that two to three live Facebook training session per week. And that is definitely uh, a way for you to make it. And also you'll be getting the growth screener. When I said before, there's a lot of stocks during this temporary uh, hop of the pullback uh, or what we call uh, rest before the market were to go back higher. Definitely there's a lot of growth stock in here and using this to find that to help to improve your edge is there. And not forget the US screener for the April in here. Uh, you can use the US screener to find some of the stocks that will benefit you in here. Definitely many, many more through our package in here, right? And also Tom always said that, right? To be an effective trader, given the opportunity and the knowledge you must understand supply and demand. That's why it's important we are able to confidently know where's the market top and where's the market bottom. And if you know that and take advantage of it, you will definitely make more uh, do so. So right now we are doing a promotion in here for those of you who are interested to opening a US market in here to look at the technical. This is the number you want to uh, WhatsApp to 018-66197. And upon the uh, successful approval, you will get 1,000 free credit smart Roby account. All right, take advantage of this one in here. And of course, we have come to the end of our talk with our five survive. Do give us a thank you and we appreciate your token appreciation. Do go over to our Google and give us a review. Here's a QR code inside here and also on our Facebook in here. And uh, right now, right, I will take some questions, but not forget, next week, 3rd of April, we'll be focusing a lot on our technical analysis. So make sure you register for this Zoom meeting. It's a free three hour workshop on technical analysis inside there. And uh, join, and right now I will take some questions because today I want, I have ended early, all right? I want to take more of those uh, macro uh, questions that you have, all right? So feel free and if you have enjoyed this, talk and you find it beneficial to you and at least going forward the next couple of weeks or at least a month or two you know where we are do go over to the google play store and the facebook store to give us a view what you think of it right so digressing a bit uh, which foreign currency is best to look into right now now take note our malaysian currency is packed into a basket whichever you look at it to me your best hedge is sing dollar and US dollar. So when you open up the US trading account, you'll be opening also in US dollar and Sing dollar, buy some dividend shares and hedge around it. Okay. There's a question on NFT. Are you talking about the NFT from Jack Dorsey? <laughs> All those. We will keep that for another time. Okay. Any question did you all have about the macro or any concern or any comment that you all have? Right. Now, the question is, if you have all the information to make a good judgment, what would you do? Are you looking out for hyperinflation with immense money printing? This is why we talked about Bitcoin shares last week. All right. So have some protection, have some exposure. Remember last week on our uh, the value growth investing for Bitcoin, I did talk about Bitcoin uh, having a, a, a place in your portfolio here. Is it right to say that Malaysian tech stock has a risk of bubble? No. <laughs> the answer is no. Okay. The tech stock is correcting just like US. Okay. Uh, why bond yield has bigger impact on tech stock? It is because of the future earnings. I think I explained this on the... So basically what it says is that look, uh, tech stocks rely on future earnings to... Give, make money because right now they're not making so that's why they're growing that you take example for facebook right first uh, let's take grab lah, okay now grab started can't make money isn't it correct not so they can't make money they probably make money when they go into 10 year when they have that big database so which means the earnings come from future so when your interest rate is high 
that's where you are penalized. So your interest has to be low because you need to have low interest rate to finance a lot of your business going forward the next to five years. That's in short, okay? Is Top Glove undervalue? Check out Smart Roby. Look at what Smart Roby say. Ah, learn to trust Smart Roby inside. US-China fighting positive to Malaysia? Definitely yes. That is one of my prediction for 2020. Uh, we want to do that. So that is why a lot of the stocks that you talk about, Great Tech, UWC, Inari, uh, Globetronics, uh, MPI, these are subcontractors uh, for the uh, US company because US usually want to buy from China, but they can't go to China, so they come to Malaysia. And that's why we are beneficial. Energy stocks, energy stocks still bullish. Energy stock will take a cue from uh, from the oil prices. So it's a good trading stocks. But once the green energy that we talk about, the three trillion news coming in to, to uh, Joe Biden, you'll see a lot of renewable energy. Take a look at renewable energies. Okay, Christine? Great, great. These are all great questions. I really enjoyed it. Political instability in Malaysia is killing the market. Uh, I would think... 40% uh, but the vaccine rollout is more important the vaccine rollout the faster they can do the vaccine rollout the better it is is FDI avoiding uh, Malaysia or Malaysia being slain? I think in some way FDI are avoiding it depending the types of uh, business that they do uh, like for example recently there is a paper paper pulp uh, big one that came in from China they opened up in Betong uh, it's called Double Dragon I think they were opening up a, a pulp factory to do paper manufacturing. So they are coming to Malaysia, but usually they want to enjoy certain raw material or what we call uh, resources, cheap labor or cheap foreign labors. We are not at the yet to compete like Singapore for high tech workers. We don't have a lot of high tech workers, to be frank. But in a way, we also lose out to Vietnam and Cambodia because Malaysia don't have labor. Today, uh, they want to pay very high for people to do harvesting of the palm oil. No people want to work. You know any of your children or any of your friends do harvesting of palm oil? Not? Maybe palm oil plantation got lah, but you wouldn't do the palm oil. I don't think so. Okay. Once the vaccine roll out, will, will the economy boom? Yes, I would say so. But we want to we don't want to wait for it to finally roll out. It's when more people have been vaccinated. You see that chart continue to go high. Logistic construction still in the uptrend signal. Look at the charts, okay? Look at the uh, the monthly uh, sector sector analysis. One good way is to subscribe to the package if you are not done so. What are the infrastructure projects that we can look Look at renewable energies since it's a 3 trillion energy inside. I think I've talked about that. Go check out the uh, one of the videos that I've done in, back in November. I talk about renewable energy with Joe Biden, new policies all right in there i'll take one or two more questions before i end the night thanks great maybe one of the uh next week or so when i do the preview to the master class and after when we finish this we do a u.s trading session a very short u.s trading because u.s now they open up at 9 30 and i usually take a look at the u.s market so i want to share with you a few things that i look at and also those of you who want to remember the number i've shared with you do open up a u.s trading account with a very reasonable good brokerage for that one all right uh, uh miss thing renewable energy tax can buy and keep i think it's important that you know what you're doing Definitely understanding the old thing. It's just like you cannot treat everything buy a whole and keep, right? It's like you know, uh, can you buy whole and keep a public bank forever, right? You need to have the knowledge. I think that's part of what we want to do in our master class and also in our mentoring coaching to teach you the knowledge, right? And when you can decide what's best for you, nothing will go up forever. Things are always changing and things are always, always moving. Keep that in mind. And once you know the, the story behind that, then you will know whether you want to keep or you want to hold. Okay, any more uh, big concern or challenge, right? Or competitors of Malaysia? Uh, something more about Malaysia competitors, maybe I can talk about it. But whether Malaysia com competitive or not, to me, it's not important. It's how well our market is doing some countries are competitive but the stock market is not what it is because very important is able to generate earnings in tied to the overall 
global trend, which I'll talk about the six global trend. If not, check out some of the video I've talked about it. I will bring it more into our masterclass. So I do hope that some of you will uh, join our masterclass that we're doing in April Intake. Do consider it. And there will be a lot more I'm able to share with you as you are part and parcel of our, our, our coaching and mentoring. Do think about our masterclass in the coming April. All right, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.